Welcome to Color Harmony. My name is Eric Francis. In this video, we're going to talk about painting and seeing. This is the third part of a three-part series. In the first part, we talked about references. In the second part, we talked about the importance of sketching. Now, let's talk about the painting. So the first step always is to make an umber wash. How I get at this umber wash is I look at the drawing, which is kind of rough, and then I transfer the drawing onto the canvas. Now, the drawing is completely mapped out even though it's a little bit rough, and it just needs a little bit of cleaning up. Then I add three different intensities of umber paint. There's dark, there's a medium, and there's a light. Now, I lighten the paint by adding water to it. So I go from darkest to lightest color. The paint is pretty diluted to begin with. I just simply dilute it more, starting off first with the dark color, then working to the medium, then to the lightest. And after they all dry, I wash over all the colors again. Now, I do this umber wash stage to fill the canvas up with paint. That then I began to pick up on things that didn't get done right. For example, in this painting, the chin wasn't right, so I had to change the chin. The uh, lips were wrong, I had to thin them down a little bit. The lips were too low, I had to move them up high. I had to turn the ears back a little bit. Now these are little slight things, but all together they help bring a stronger likeness to the painting. And if I didn't do the umber wash stage, I wouldn't be able to catch it. And it's really cool to catch these things early on before you really start to build up paint. So we start off with the darkest paint and we work towards the lightest paint. And you wanna keep your reference photo close by because you don't wanna lose the likeness. Even though you're not really doing anything really um, specific, you're just filling in colors, you can easily go off course. I used a very limited palette in this painting because as painters we have a very interesting problem. It's actually a good problem. Too many paints. So we're mostly using umber and white for the portrait. So for this first stage of the painting, we're going to layer it for about three to six layers. While you're layering paint this way, it's far too easy to not look at your reference. And because of that, things go slightly off. You make mistakes that you could really easily avoid just by checking your reference every once in a while. If you can, it'll be a worthwhile thing to get other reference photos of the person that you're painting. Because sometimes, in your main reference photo, there might be certain things that are blurry or that you want to change. And you want to have this other reference material around to kind of go back to and look at. Because if you're going straight from your imagination, you might go off in the wrong direction. When you have the reference photo there, you have something solid and tangible to work from. Let's take a look at this painting of Mila Kunis. Someone commented that her eyes were completely wrong. Well, let's take a closer look see. Because of our symbol system, we have ideas about the way we think things should look. You might think it should look like this, or that, or this, or that. But in my opinion, she's giving the squinty eye look. When is it natural to give the squinty eye look? When we smile, of course. It's not natural to smile without squinting your eyes some. It's like the harder you smile, the more your eyes squint. We have to get past our symbol system that tells us what everything should look like. And when you do, you're gonna wonder if you've ever seen anything because you're gonna to begin to see things as they are and not as you are. 
let's take a look at the hands and see if we can see it in a simpler way. First, the hand can be drawn as some very simple geometric shapes. Second, if you were to open your hand and stretch your fingers out, you would notice they all pointed inwards, all of them except your thumb, of course. And if you were to close your hand and bring your fingers together, they all turn towards each other and meet. As you're drawing in the basic shape, consider all the negative space and the positive forms around the hand. If you look at A, you'll see that if you get that shape right, you get that part of the hand right. All these lines are imaginary lines that represent what I'm seeing. So when you look at B, C, and D, I break it down into even smaller parts. In letter G, I'm measuring the space between A and E. In letter H, I'm measuring how high up the thumb is on the cheek. And finally, in letter I, I'm beginning to refine the shapes. I'm comparing one side of the pinky to the other side. The hand, like every other part of the body, is a series of curves on top of curves. At this stage of the painting, it's completely blended and we're almost done. It takes around six to eight layers to get to this point. Now, the reason why it might take so many layers to get to this point is because I like my paint thin. Now, if you were painting with thicker paint, you could get to that much faster. I add water and medium to all my paint. And also, some paints aren't as thick as other paints. So I have to add extra layers of one particular color in order for it to get full coverage. Plus the quality of paint matters. In general, not always, but in general, the more pricier paint means more pigment in the paint. So that means you have to use less paint because the pigment concentration is higher. In conclusion, I'll say, on this road, we're often confronted with a choice. Do you do what you want to do, or do you do what others want you to do? Or you can say, do you believe what's in your heart, or do you believe what other people are saying to you? It's your choice. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, like, subscribe, share, and or leave a comment. If you want to see more art, you can check out my blog. There will be a link in the description. If you enjoy this content, and you've been learning a lot, and you want to do more to support this content, you can donate. Your donations go to pay for paints, paintbrushes, canvases, and all the knickknacks I need to keep this thing going. There is a button on my blog that will take you to PayPal. And I thank you in advance for whatever you leave. These videos are made in response to questions I get asked all the time. So feel free to ask. Peace.